lost you. I lost you. Dude, it was like 70 minutes of conversation, just completely lost. And like I kept talking and you looked like it, like nothing. your face was looked so involved. And then I realized you weren't blinking anymore. But I was like, well, maybe he's learned a new skill. So I just kept talking for 70 plus minutes. Yeah, there was a... um. There was a time I was on a call with uh, my team and one of the girls that works for me, hers froze up, like her Zoom froze up. And it was like the goofiest face. It was like something like this or she was like, <laughs> and it was just, fr- so I took a screenshot of it. <laughs> and I literally have like, I've used that a couple times to my advantage because it's so like the face is so funny because it's just like, <laughs> like right in the middle of speaking, you know, and it just like, it's that perfect moment. Oh, yeah. What happens? Fucking hysterical. Anyway, uh, we'll move on from the last subject. I don't even remember what it was because I like. I fin- was just going to miss it. Because I just like finished it, you know, like it was a one and done thing. Yep. You can't get you can't get back into it. It's like um, it's like uh, all getting all the toothpaste out of the toothpaste bottle or toothpaste tube. Can't put it back in once it's right. out. Right. Exactly. Can't go back in. Uh, oh, did I – have you – you probably haven't. There's a new trailer for a witches movie. Remember that witches movie with, like, the really ugly witches in the hotel and they turn the kid into a rat? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a new one. It's, like, an HBO, and it's, like, Anne Hathaway and, like, a couple other, like, famous actors. They're remaking the movie. It looks terrible. It looks, it looks awful. It looks worse than the first one. And the first one's actually really good because it's meant to be kind of cheesy yeah ridiculous this one just looks ridiculous but yeah they're remaking that movie but i remember i remember the first time watching that movie it scared me when they're at the convention and they start transforming into witches like oh my god it it, like it fucking scared me and all like the green gas shit like whatever they do in the spell and i was like everything turns in like like, (laughs) yeah like it that used to scare me when i was younger so it's a remake of that movie which i thought was kind of cool that's and they're also remaking the one with um the three who are the three cunts what's um what's that movie hocus pocus hocus pocus the remake and hocus pocus too interesting i like that movie that movie is fucking sweet uh, yeah i like that one a lot too and tis the season man we're in october it's yeah the second right now when you hear this it'll be the fifth but it's October now. Spirits are high. The ghouls are coming out. Like, this is a perfect time to do some seance shit. So, how about before we get into any more stuff, Corey? Because we're on yeah. Zoom, because I think it's still applicable. Mm-hmm. I double dog dare you to say Bloody Mary three times into your Zoom conference call. I'm not going to do it. Bloody Mary. Not gonna do it. Bloody Mary. Nope. Don't do it. Oh. oh I'm afraid. Don't do it. I don't know if I want to say it. Oh, I'm gonna poop. No. <laughs> Bloody. Oh, I don't know if I can finish it. <sighs> Bloody Mary. Oh, oh, oh God. We oh. fucked. I already feel weird. We fucked. I already feel weird. Everybody gonna die. What if our, what if our, uh, did you say what if, what a fart? What a fart. (laughs) (laughs) What if (laughs) our episodes were like the ring and every time you watched one, you had to transfer, someone else had to watch it to prevent you from dying. That'd be crazy. So, like, maybe this is our call to action to our following. <laughs> if you watch this episode and you don't make someone else watch it in seven days, you're going to die. Yeah, well, that's quite an indictment, Chris. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's called premeditated murder. The last thing you want to see me is crawl out of your computer screen. <laughs> all wet and soppy you know no, no one wants that and no i give you your craziest O face ever when you die because that's what it is it's just yeah, a bunch they like of, freeze up like it's just a bunch of people that are caught in mid-orgasm it's just like <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it is dude look at the veins in my forehead i get one too right here 
You know why? It's because I just yelled for a few minutes. Oh, that'll do it. Also, look at my lesbian haircut. It looks good, though. It does look good. I really I love it this length. It's great. Oh, I got a teeth cleaning this morning. So mm-hmm. I went to the dentist to clean my, clean my teeth. And uh, the <laughs> the oral, I don't know, ortho, what do they call the tex? Oh, that's not good. That's the DS de Gloria too. Ooh, bad mama. That's not good. Hide that. We'll edit this out. Um, <laughs> blur, blur out the cigar. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I went to the dentist and the dental hygienist lady was like cleaning my teeth. And she's like, you have really nice teeth. I was like, thank you. And uh She's like, do you usually get them clean like every six months? And I was like, no. She's like, oh, how often do you get them clean? I was like, I'm on an interval of like every 17 years. <laughs> and she was like, what? I was like, yeah, I, I, I haven't had a teeth cleaning since I was like in high school. She's like, you're kidding me. I was like, not joking at all. She's like, your teeth are so nice. I was like, thank you. I appreciate that. And she's like, oh, by the way, we're going to have to do another root canal. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, no. Yeah, I have a tooth that um, I had a filling on this side. And the tooth is broken off and it's been broken off forever. I mean, I, I deal with, I mean, it doesn't hurt. And she was like, yeah, that one's gonna, that one's gonna get worse. And you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to get another root canal. I was like, cool. Dude, I've been Can't on wait. a deep rabbit hole on my Instagram search feed. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, and now it's a combination of celebrities, what they looked like then and what they look like now. I don't know like how. You're I, intentionally looking for this or this is something? No, this is like something about. that it's being recommended to me. And then the, another one is like um, like people with curly hair, like how to like maintain your curly hair and look healthy. Dude, just ask me. I can tell you exactly how to do it. And then the last, the last bit, which is something that I do intentionally watch on there, is like zip popping and That's like weird gross. like blackhead removals. Why do you but do it, that? but it's led to dental stuff. So like I've been watching a bunch of people like have their teeth filed down, like really bad teeth, you yeah. filed down and getting like veneers or like getting these, all these different techniques of like getting fake teeth. Yeah. That's weird. There's have so you, many different techniques. Have you watched the social dilemma yet? No. So it's a documentary on Netflix. Um, you should watch it. It's directly related to why you're seeing certain things. Obviously, probably, I mean, you know how it works. Like, you know, like, no different than like you and I could be talking about like, oh, I can't wait to buy this new mattress from so-and-so. And And then 10 minutes later, you look at your Facebook feed and there's a sponsor ad for that mattress, right? I want to be a millionaire. And it's just a bunch of people saying that they can, how how you can become a millionaire. Right. Look look what I've done in the residential housing market. Yeah. Yeah. You see this Lamborghini? Bought and paid for cash. (laughs) Right. So, so the social dilemma is, a documentary and a lot of the people who are in the documentary are the original creators or people who used to work for like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like all these big, like, I didn't realize that the guy who, the guy who created the like button for Mm -hmm. Facebook is the, is the uh, founder of Asana. It's his company. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost, I I almost put money into their stocks when they went public this last week. Really? Asana? Yeah. They've gone up 38%. 38% since their IPO. Well, just the, do it now. But the problem was is that the buy-in was really high too. Which yeah, they also have a lot of competition, unfortunately. They have like Monday.com and then like what's the other one? Tell tell something. Tell, Trello. Trello. That's what it is. So you get a lot of competition. But anyway, besides the point, you need to watch the documentary because it's all about how like they were talking about, you know, social media has been great at its inception. Like at, at the beginning, it was a way to connect people and it did a lot of good for a lot of people. But then they talked about how like that machine unchecked, unregulated has caused so much detriment to people's lives. And it was talking about like even um, the idea of like being able to use user data or to sell user data they're like this is not regulated this is not like the pharmacy industry it's not like anything we've ever seen it's so unregulated that your shit is literally everywhere at all times being used against you which is crazy so a little fun fact uh two days ago i made a life decision that decision was to adopt out my child no Get out of the <laughs> uh, no, I deactivated my Facebook account. Yeah, I'm getting ready to do the same. Honestly, like I'm, I, I love, like I love Instagram because what it does for, like it's the best medium we have for what we do. 
mm-hmm. but like my Facebook is so unnecessary. It's just unnecessary at all levels. And like, I was thinking about it the other day, contemplating. I was like, I think this weekend or before the weekend, I'm just going to. I did it. It felt phone. good too. Yeah, I need to do that really bad. I've been trying to spend a lot less time on my phone and successfully because obviously you can see like certain metrics of like how much you spend on certain apps and whatever. And mm-hmm. it's decreased for me significantly. And a lot of it's just because I'm so busy. But like I'm even going to challenge myself like on the weekends not to, you know, I, I usually I was posting like for the podcast, which I don't do anything on my personal Instagram. It's all for the podcast, right? Yeah. But I was posting sometimes at intervals two times a day, typically always two times a day. Two times a day, so it's 14 times a week. And it's rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Well, then I cut that back to once a day. So now I only do once a day. Now I'm thinking about cutting it back to just five days a week, not including the weekends, just not posting anything on the weekend. Yeah. Other than like things on stories and stuff like that, because those are just fun and they're quick or whatever. But like, like why am I spending so much fucking time doing this? Like for, for what? For what? For like some more likes and some you know, a, a minuscule amount of more follows or whatever, like, it's like, a shit. in a weird way for most people, it's like, don't forget about me. I'm doing all these things. Don't forget about me. I, my drive, though, is not personal. My drive is, is what we do on the podcast. But I feel like if the content is good enough, it'll speak for itself. You know what I mean? You'll get, you'll get increase in listenership and engagement naturally just because of the content that you put out, not how much effort you're putting into social media. I do think the two things go hand in hand. So I'm not saying I'm disbanding it completely. I'm just, I think the throttle back is really healthy. Like I remember when we were moving in to the house, there was two days where I didn't even open Instagram and it felt fucking incredible. Like never even looked at my phone, like just, I wasn't responding to texts either. Like I wasn't fucking calling anyone back. It was just like, I was focused on the house and it felt good just to be, to have that level of removal. And now knowing what I know, which I've known, like it's weird. Cause like the social dilemma documentary highlights things that I think most intelligent people in terms of like what they understand social media to be in terms of like advertisements are, they already understand it. But for like people who don't and don't understand like how, Instagram is taking through uh, uh, certain algorithms, which by the way, only become smarter and smarter with your data, the more active you are on a social media platform. So over a period of time, it fucking narrows down to a very high degree, your likes and dislikes and continues pushing content to you for advertising purposes, right? Like how do we convert someone, you know, Cordy keeps looking up pictures of fucking you know, giant dildos. How do we push more giant dildo content to Corey? You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, that's literally what it's doing with every single person. And I'm not even on it that much. I've, I, you know, I have a big boy job. You know, I, my attention is not really diverted all that much during the day, but there's a lot of people and young kids and teenagers who spend their life on their phone and think about what that does correlating like likes and dislikes personal you know what i mean personal things that you attach yourself to hobbies and so on what kind of data is just being absorbed by these massive organizations to to basically push back on you like it's crazy how it's like they're using your data uh, essentially against you yeah it's wild you know i don't know conspiracy theory when it's true yeah i mean you know how i am with social media it's yeah you know what's strange though you know what is always kind of dumbfounded me about you well i guess not so much now that i've watched that documentary but it is strange how you live in the tech world but are removed in terms of like social media but what's weird is is all these people who are like these tech like they they had a guy who was uh the formal uh, former ceo of twitter yeah the interviewer asked me he's like he's like you have young children right and he goes yeah he goes do you let them on social media he goes absolutely not He's like, they get no time on phones. Like we have, my wife and I have restrictions from them where they can't have tablets, they can't have phones, they can't have social media accounts until they're adults. And I was like, damn. And this is a guy who fucking ran Twitter. So he knows. And and all the other people said the same thing. They're like, absolutely not. Like one guy was like, my kids have tablets for like learning, but we limit their time to certain hours a day. And like, there's like a usage thing where like, we'll literally shut off the tablets that they use that if it's used over a certain amount of time for things that aren't like education related. I was like, yeah, shit. Exactly. Exactly. 
And most people go unrestricted in terms of those things because what happens is it's like a tablet and those social media accounts and the interaction from an internet perspective become babysitter for kids. Yeah. Give, give me one second. I'm going to go trank this dog. Hey, Kale. Hey, man. What's up? You know, you know what I'm doing. Don't pester that dog. Get up here. Oh, Kale's aggravating him? Yeah. Yeah, you should know better. That's Tim. Come, come on, man. Come on, bro. Bro. Tell him I won't play video games with him if he doesn't stop. Corey won't play video games with you if you keep pestering that dog over there. I don't want to have to put it down. And that ain't even my dog. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so let's, let's get into um, – this is a good segue. Let's get into today's topic for the podcast, which is another overrated, underrated. However, the dynamic has changed. Ooh. Typically, it's an overrated, underrated on brands specifically which we have a ton of those to still go through. But this time I wanted to switch it up a little bit. I want to do overrated, underrated on specific cigars. And sure. these cigars are provided by our collective audience, not by us. So we are going to challenge ourselves. And of course, these have to be cigars of which we have smoked before that we can talk to and we can talk about. Um, and we are going to decide whether or not we think categorically these individual cigars are overrated, underrated. It has nothing to do with the brand. Could be a brand that we've already talked about. We could have named that brand as either overrated or underrated. But individually, to putting a microscope on one individual cigar, is it overrated? Is it underrated? I don't know how many we'll go through. We could go through five. We could go through 10. We could go through 20. We got about 40 submissions, so who knows how long it'll take us. Well, we can keep it short. They're all overrated. <laughs> They're all dog shit. Um, so in no particular order, let's begin. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. First one on the list. I'm so nervous. <laughs> is the Tatuaje Black Label. Ooh. Okay. And that one comes in at a price point of eight bucks, right? Uh, it's pretty modest. Yeah, it's not. It's not all expensive. I would say it's one of the more affordable ones in the tattoo a lot. I have my own personal. Uh, I'm wanting to hear from you first before I chime in on the tattoo hey. Tattoo hey, blah way ball. Um, here. Um, I. You know, to be honest with you, tattoo hey puts out some great smokes. They do have upper echelon price cigars. However, the Black Label, if, I'm, if I am not mistaken, is around $8. Uh, honestly, I want to say, I, don't, I, think it's, I think it's priced appropriately. I don't think it's overrated. There's really no gimmicks to it. It's a full-bodied smoke. Never had any issues with it. I think, uh, I think, I think that one's a fair, I think that one's, hits the mark, hits the mark. Yeah, so it's, um, I would say for me, because I've only had bad experiences with this particular cigar, <laughs> I think it's overrated because I've never had a good experience with it. Now, I don't want to necessarily say that the cigar itself is overrated. Um, I think if you're talking about specifically from an experience perspective, I would say it's overrated because I have always had challenges with this cigar. However, from a flavor perspective, I actually really like the Tatuaje Black. I think it's a very delicious cigar. Um, I don't, it's not my favorite. I would even argue like the Havana six, which is at Red a label high point yeah. or close to, to me is a better cigar. Uh, I think it's a better value. Um, but I think the cigar, honestly, in terms of like the Tatawaihe lineup is very appropriate. I don't think it's, I don't think it's one of those cigars that is where I'm like over challenged by the cigar or, or underwhelmed by it either. I think it, it fits right in where it needs to fit with the Tatuaje lineup. Yeah, for sure. Okay. If, well, if don't shoot that dog. I'm going to shoot that. Hey, dog. we'll agree to disagree on that one. Hey, Kale, go inside, bud. Take Ripley with you. That dog just, you know, you know what it is. It's, it's, it's fucking like, annoying is what it is. God it's like, damn, I'm talking to shut up. Imagine not having any friends 
and then someone walks up to you trying to make yeah i know the, the, the dog just seems lonely and it's outside all the time i feel bad for it but i'm also gonna kill it and that dog is literally trying to tell ripley its life story in the form of a bark yeah and ripley's like i just kind of want you to sniff my ass i don't need like the whole like background of your life and your parents and your shitty owners <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, the guy that was really obnoxious. Um, so you think the Tatawahe Black is appropriate? I do. I've never had a problem with the Tatawahe. You right. know, what I think? and like, I think it's priced well. I think it's a decent smoke. Yeah, it's definitely priced well. There's, there's yeah. no doubt about that. Again, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty in line with, um like the standard brown label the havana six i think it's it's pretty it's pretty well aligned with those cigars in terms of a price point actually i would even argue i'm pretty sure the black is even less i honestly think if i remember correctly i only paid for like what i smoked in this cigar which i remember being a larger vitola was only probably like six bucks Really? No, so it's probably right in alignment with Havana Six. So really, from a value perspective, it seems like the cigar is probably um, pretty fucking amazing. Uh, I just never had any good. I've just never had any good experiences with the black. The black is the very first Tatuaje that I smoked. It was mm-hmm. the very first one where, you know, it was like fucking sucking a meatball through a straw. Like and, it's the it's the, oh, black, it's, it's the black sheep of the entire lineup just so challenging it was it was ridiculous but i would say all things considered i've i've had it recently and i don't think the i, I think there's so many tatuajes that are good in flavor or great in flavor it kind of masks this one but for the price it's like it's pretty fucking good yeah so i'm yeah. gonna go appropriate i'm gonna go appropriate given my personal experiences but like the fact that the cigar is so inexpensive and you get a really good cigar typically if it's smoking as intended you get a pretty good cigar. Personal experiences match with that. I'm going to say it's appropriate for the market. And it's not gimmicky. Not you know? No gimmick to it at all. Zero. Um, next up on the list, you're actually smoking it currently, which is the AJ Fernandez Diaz de Gloria. Mm, oh, the famed AJ stick that represents what he's been wanting to do with his own personal brand for so, so long. Now I have a question for you, Corey. I actually don't know the price point on this cigar. So you're going to have to enlighten me before I give judgment. Sure. Right around the $10 mark. Okay. For what you're smoking currently. Uh, we, I believe in the past said that AJ itself was unfortunately with an asterisk, uh, an overrated brand uh one by which produce better cigars for other folks than they do their own that would be correct but if you were to take it from that macro scale and bring it down into the minute the micro and just look at this cigar as it is ignore all your other experiences ignore all the other ages you might have smoked in the past ago well that's not that great this one, this one in particular, had a $10 price point in a seven by what looks like 48 or something. I'm not sure. Something like that. Yeah. Um, we'll go with that. Wow. What a good cigar. <laughs> what a good cigar. Yeah. And it's, um, it's, it's great. What a good cigar. And it's, I'm glad to see something come out of the AJ that he can put his own stamp of approval on, you know, that he's not doing for someone else. He's doing it for himself. What's more humbling than that? What's yeah. more um, non gimmicky than that? You know, I would agree with you. I look at the cigar and first of all, someone submitted this as one to, um, to cover but I just posted a review on the cigar and it was the only score that I've ever given in a recommendation that is that we called the hot ticket. Right. Yeah. Which is the absolute upper echelon score. It's the top remarks you can get. Um, So for me, it's, it's pretty obvious. I think it's because we've categorized AJ Fernandez as a whole in the past as a, an overrated brand for many reasons 
a cigar like this comes to the marketplace, I smoke it, understand the flavor complexity to it, and it offers up a good sense of balance. It was almost to me, it was like, um, it's like the phoenix rising from the ashes. It's like this rebirth, right? Yeah. And to me, it was like, if this is the cigar that is the rebirth cigar and everything to follow is going to match, it's going to match that kind of intensity in terms of um, what they're going to blend and, and bring to the marketplace. Holy shit. You know, my opinion would change completely because this is hands down one of the best cigars I've ever had. This DS de Glorio, I think is an absolutely phenomenal cigar. And even at $10, I'm going to say is underrated. And I think it's underrated because it doesn't get the attention that it deserves. I think it should get more attention, but I think a lot of people feel the same way about AJ that we do. And I'm not so sure people are all that enthusiastic about trying the cigar. I think there's some reluctance there. I'm here to say, put that reluctance aside, smoke the cigar. It's absolutely incredible. I would also agree. I think with any predisposition you have towards the AJ brand, that this one is going to be looked upon as a not so great cigar but coming from me that puts it in the underrated category as well yeah it's one of those cigars where you just kind of you're just gonna have to try it and and experience it for yourself but that said out of all the aj lineups you know all the cigars that he's produced this is an underrated one in the in that lineup yeah it is I completely agree. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I can't get enough of them. I smoke them all the fucking time. It's like I literally cannot get enough of them. Um, so AJ Fernandez, DS de Gloria, absolutely and definitively underrated. Um, next up on the list, the Southern Draw Cedrus. And I don't know if this is a cigar that you've had. I've had it multiple times. This is the green one, right? This is the green one. I've had it. Um, so here's my thing about the Cedrus. I smoked this in Arkansas a couple years ago and then smoked it again probably about six months ago. Mm -hmm. And the reason I smoked it twice is because I was hoping the second time that I smoked it would be vastly different than the first time. Of course, when I say that, I mean I hope it's a lot better. The Southern Draw Cedrus, I think, is probably the a foundation cigar. Is a, um, I would say is probably like the staple cigar for Southern Draw. It's the one that I think has garnered the most attention and the most hype and probably the most accolades. Um, so I smoke that cigar with that same kind of shared enthusiasm because typically I follow that hype train pretty close. Um, of course, I, I, I give my own opinion and I'm not necessarily saying that I agree with what everyone agrees with, but if something's hyped up, I want to try it. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. And the Southern Draw Cedrus for me when I smoked it was so underwhelming. I thought the cigar itself had a really heavy spice component with not a lot of um, good balanced flavors. Um, and that was through the whole cigar. So there's times I was smoking the cigar and I go, ugh, it's just not there yet. But I anticipate given what I've heard that this cigar is going to balance out quite nicely as I progress forward. And it never did. I thought the cigar was so just lacking across the board. Um, and that was my first experience smoking the cigar, right? So I challenged myself not that long ago to smoke it again, because there's a lot in the Southern draw lineup that I like the Rose of Sharon. I really like it's one of the only Connecticut's that I like. You have the Jacob's ladder, which I think is the brimstone specifically. And that crazy Vitola is so fucking good. The cigar, the wrapper on that cigar is so goddamn thick and delicious. That cigar is absolutely incredible. So I'm like, Maybe it was just me. Like, let me give this Cedrus another try. I smoke it again. Very underwhelmed by the cigar. Very underwhelmed. I, I, I know people who love this cigar, and I'm just not getting what they're getting. Or from a palatability perspective, we're just so different that whatever is, I say whatever sparking what's going on in their mouth, it's just I'm, I'm not getting that same spark at all. So for me, I think the cigar itself is very overrated because it did kind of come with some hype a little bit and it's been categorized as again the staple cigar of the southern draw lineup well the problem is which i don't think it, you know, i'm going to address the elephant in the room there's a problem with making a cigar for a celebrity you know this cigar was made for cedrus the entertainer uh <laughs> and 
the minute you get into producing cigars for celebrities is the is the minute you diminish the value of the cigar and just slap a name on it to someone who's popular and cedrus the entertainer is one by which i don't hold much affinity or appreciation for so i knew i probably was not gonna like this cedrus cigar um i i also found it to be slightly underwhelming um and uh yeah i i at this point I don't, I don't, uh, I don't stand by the maybe the popular vote of anybody who's, who's appreciated this cigar. Now, as as an asterisk, uh, that story was made up. For any of you who are gonna try to like, <laughs> what say some shit, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <the entertainer>. um, <laughs> but I didn't really care for it that much. I didn't. Um, I think I've had it once and that was enough for me. Yeah. It's just, I, I don't know. I, I, I just didn't get it. You know, when people were kind of touting the cigars being like this, um, you know, insanely great cigar that's got so much complexity to it. And it's just got all of these great characteristics. I'm like, what, what am I missing? Like, what am I not getting? You know, honestly, it's like another cigar that, um, we're certainly going to be talking about, I think, on this episode and actually maybe coming up soon. Uh, nope, not yet. Uh, I don't even know if we'll make to it this episode. But, um, yeah, I thought, the, I thought the Cedrus was overrated. And it comes with a really hefty price. When we're talking about $12 for this fucking cigar. $12 for a Southern Draw cigar. I'm like, I'm out, man. I'm out. It's just well, they, not, I well, don't they tried to it. price it appropriately to the cost of admission to go watch Cedrus do stand-up. Yeah, and uh, you know it's just gimmicky. It's just a bit gimmicky, and it is overrated. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> so agree. I stand with you on that one. Um, on to the next one. This is the Illusione Singulare, Ooh. which I've had only a handful of times. What, Chris? What do you think about this cigar? I'm pretty sure you've smoked the. I'm pretty sure you smoked the Singulare. I have. I don't know if there's many Illusione that I haven't smoked at this point. Um, Singulare, it, correct me if I'm wrong, that's a $15 stick. Uh, yes, right about. It's um, upper echelon price point for Illusione cigars. I think this one actually really doesn't eclipse the, tw- uh, I think it's like the $13 mark. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta, when you take a draw of your cigar, you gotta not inhale. Um, I've never had a bad experience with Illusione or how we, we call it in the South, Illusion. Um, I've always had an affinity towards their cigars. Um, I've found some Illusione high priced cigars to be a little bit overvalued. Um, but they're usually always good. Um, there's a, there's a little gimmick to their brand. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's cool. I dig it. Yeah. 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 Um, I agree. I think the Singulare is slightly overvalued as well. Um, I'm debating on if I think it's appropriately priced or a little bit overrated. Now there's a lot of illusions that I think are underrated because I think of the price point, I think of the brand and I think of the exposure and it's like, man, they make some really good fucking cigars. Um, when you get up to that echelon of price point and it's still kind of not a, it's still very, very much a kind of a boutique type of cigar. Um, that's the, that, that's what gives me pause to think it's, it's appropriate. It like hits the mark. But I do struggle with the price point that maybe makes it slightly overrated. Uh, it's almost like, well, we make this stellar, you know, like best tobacco ever type cigar, and we're selling it for thirteen to fifteen bucks. And you go, well, it's, it's good, but it's not like it's not like amazing like some right. of the other ones that I can get at like seven bucks, eight bucks. I don't know. I think I know. You know what? I'll stick with, I will stick with 
being appropriate. Okay. It's a cigar for me, and there's so many within the Illusione lineup. This one, to me, actually kind of stands out a little bit. I've smoked this one quite often, um, even with the elevated price point. But typically, I always smoke this in a pretty large Vitola. I actually have two in my humidor right now, and it's actually making me want to smoke it. I think this cigar is absolutely incredible. In terms of all Illusione product, which to me has a lot of similar characteristics. One is not necessarily that different than the other. That's just me personally. Yeah. I think when you execute uh, on your strategy being um, uh, crafting everything you can from Aganorsa, and I understand that Dion probably gets top picks in terms of the tobacco that he, you know, they they grow and he's able to utilize. Um, I'd say even with that, they all have very similar characteristics. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Their cigars are incredible. This one, to me, kind of stands out against the others, especially for that price point. You have cigars like the Hot 10, which um, is that's what? A good one. Like 20, 20 plus it's, dollars. It's, it's good, a though. great cigar. Yeah. But I think about like the elevation and pricing. I think about value overall. And I think the Singulare actually has – um, it has some of those same characteristics, but doesn't come with the heightened price. I still think it's pricey, but I've only ever smoked this in the largest Vitola you can get in this cigar. And it's like, if I can enjoy two hours at that price point with that such great tobacco to me, like in my head, I go, yeah, that's, that's kind of worth it. Um, so for me, I think it's very appropriate. Um, I don't think it's overrated. I don't think it's underrated. I think it fucking nailed it because it's a great cigar, great tobacco, always super consistent. And I find myself just going back and smoking it pretty often. So I'm trying to remember if what I had was a Singulari limited edition. I had it at the lounge. It was $30. Oh. And it was. Yeah, they, they were selling those. Um, they, they were selling those. came in a box. And it came in a re- and it was really long. It was like I mean, you should probably look that up just to confirm. But I am. I'm looking it up now. I want to say it was singular. I could be wrong though. But uh, that one was I don't good. I think you are. I don't know. Maybe you are, but I don't know. Anyway, I like the cigar itself. Um, I think I've. I think I when I first initially smoked it, I think I was probably in the Toro. I think mm. I've only ever had it in Toro. I actually may have had it in that original Vitola that they had, which was, um, I think it was like, what is seven, seven by something. It's, it's longer. It's more like a Churchill. Um, I actually think I have two of those left. And I think that Vitola is fucking great for that cigar. Typically with Aganors of Tobacco, I like stuff that's in a smaller Vitola um, that, you know, kind of falls in line with what Warp does, right? That Corona size Vitola or like Petite Corona size Vitola or even like in Lancero. But a Louisiana he fucking kind of knocked it out of the park with the Singulare and just these fucking fat donger Vitolas. I think the tobacco is great, and I love it. I love it in those larger sizes. And we're talking 6 by 50 6 by 52 7 by 46 5 and a quarter by 54 3 and 3 quarters by 48 Like, those are some dongers. They're like real fucking dongs, man. Yeah. And th- that, that tobacco is great. I love the Vitolas, and I love the smoke itself. The more I talk about it, I, I think it's really I think it's really appropriate for what you get. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah. I, I think I think it kind of hits the mark. The the more I beat it up in my head, the more I'm like, yeah, it, it I think it hits it. You know what's weird? It's like I keep I keep going down to the basics of why it's a cigar that I that I I, I seek. It's like when I see it, I want to smoke it. And to me, that makes it worth it. You know what I mean? If I see it and I see it on the shelves to its, to its most basic form, it's like take, take value aside, take the price comparison and the smoking experience comparison and the flavor and just break it down bare bones. If you see it on the shelf, do you want to grab it and smoke it? That cigar is that to me. Where I'm like, yeah, I feel the same way about an EP Creo, EP Creo La Historia. It's like one of my all time favorite cigars. So when I see it, even if someone is fucking selling it for way too much and they're selling it for fucking $13, $14. I'm like, it's hard for me not to grab it because I like it that much, even though I know I can get it for less. The yeah. Singular is kind of like that for me. I think when I see it and I'm like, fuck, I don't even care if I had to pay 13 bucks for it. I'm <laughs> grabbing it and I'm smoking it. You're welcome, Illusione. I'm just saying. That was a pretty fucking great endorsement. Hey, Illusione, 
it's all constructive what we're saying here, but I want to give you yeah. one kudos. You, my friends, create one of the most beloved candelas that I hold dear to my heart, the mm. 88 Candela. And that is a pretty oof, good cigar. Love it. It's the only one that battles the uh, Fomorian. Yep. Yep. All right. Moving on. Next up, the Rodriguez Primera Class. I don't know if it's class, like Klaus. Klaus. Like a, like a German. German guy, Klaus. Klaus or yeah. if it's Classe. Um, either way, I just smoked one of these last night while we were on a video chat. Um, first of all, this cigar is not expensive. Nope. I'm just going to come out and say it's sub $10. I think it's like at the $8 price point. And I'm not saying you're going to find these on shelves everywhere because you're not. Nope. This to me is literally one of the best cigars I've smoked. By the way, it comes in this fucking super tight box press. I mean, we talk about box press. This is a fucking box press. This isn't that fucking oval shape. This is not a lazy press down. This is, I'm taking this goddamn fucking cylinder and I'm mashing it into a fucking square. Literally looks just like this phone. That's how it's shaped. The fucking thing is incredible. This cigar to me is so fucking good for the price point. I just wish they were everywhere. I just wish they were everywhere. Now, do I have a bias towards Rodriguez cigars? Yeah. Of course I do. My bias is actually built on the fact that I think all of their cigars, I've not had one Rodriguez cigar that I haven't liked. I think everything I've had from them is amazing. And I love their owner, Danny. Danny is such an incredible dude. I loved having a conversation with him. He continues to be awesome. So yeah, I do have a bias. This cigar itself though, this particular one is so strikingly amazing. It's like, it's hard to even put into, like, I haven't reviewed this cigar yet and I haven't done it for a specific reason. And I may never actually review this cigar. You know why? I just want this one to myself. <laughs> I don't want to have to fucking tell people how good it is. Like in a written review on the internet for the end of time. I just want it to be mine. Like this is the one cigar that I just wanted. I just want to hold it to me. Like, I don't want to have to tell people like the intricacies and I won't do it on here either. I won't tell you about the flavor profile. I won't tell you how the burn experience is. I won't tell you about the construction. The only thing I'll say is I think this cigar is so goddamn underrated, so underrated. And Rodriguez as a whole is so fucking underrated. Like I just wish they were in every B and M in existence. The cigars are so incredible in this Primera class, class or class A. I don't know if it has an accent mark at the, after the E. I don't really give a shit. It's so goddamn fucking good. And I'll say this. I think they're so good that even if you can't find them in a retail, even if you can't find them online, just go to Rodriguez's site and fucking buy them. Just go to the site. Buy them. You can buy a box of the fucking site. Just go to them directly. Buy the cigar. Buy a box of them. You will not be disappointed. Buy a box of 20. Have them shipped to you. And you will orgasm in your own mouth and you'll love every second of it. So I'm going to assume that you're saying underrated. Very underrated. It's, uh, dude, it's one of the best cigars I've ever had. Like hands fucking down. And it's another box press. How weird is that? Yeah. My favorite EP Korea is in a box, box press. I don't know. It's so strange. I have, like I, a, I have this like strange affinity to box press cigars now. I don't know why. I would agree with you. It's so, it is so good. Um, and it's baffling to me that I had to find out about it through back end channels of someone who knows someone to right. get, get my hands on one, you know, right. that was the reality of how we even found them. Yeah. Uh, so I always say this, like I give all the kudos in the world from Dave at, um, cigar club.com. He's the one that introduced us to Danny originally, um, and got us connected and got us hooked up. Um, both incredible human beings, and I'm glad he did because it, had I not been turned on to that cigar, at this point in time, I'd be so severely disappointed knowing what I know. I'd be like, what the, how have I ever missed out? And you know what's weird about it too. This is the fucking strange thing about Rodriguez overall. When I post pictures of their cigar, dude, they have the fucking strongest like cult following, like of 
diehard Rodriguez fans. Like people that come out of the woodwork and they're like, best shit ever on the fucking market, hands down. And you're like, whoa. It's it's a hidden gem. They're like, this is the only fucking thing I smoke. I'm like, Jesus Christ. It's a hidden gem. It, it really is, is, man. I just want to see him. And I don't even know if it's Danny's intention to like just like mass market these motherfuckers and get them in every B&M. I mean, we had a conversation with him and I know there's obviously that opportunity for expansion. And I know he's just kind of going with the flow and, and that's awesome. I admire what he does from a business perspective, but the cigar is so good. It's like, I want everybody to try it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not good enough for me personally to just let him like do his own thing. It's like, I want to be like, listen here, motherfucker, you send a thousand boxes immediately across the United States and just let people have all the wet dreams in the world about this. It's like cigar. finding the best fucking queso dip on yumly.com and then you're like, it's <laughs> so fucking good that you just want... What the fuck is a yumly? <laughs> <laughs> you just want to share it with every. You want to make it for everyone. Okay. Everybody to try the queso dip. It's I don't like, even know what yumly is. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm putting together a party. It's like, oh, to watch the game. It's like, no, it's just for the queso. Just come over. I want you to try this queso. Funny. Yumly. I don't even know what yumly is. It is it is underrated. It's a hidden gem. Yeah, it's hidden good. hidden gem cigar, hands down. Um, I, I'll never say too many good things about Rodriguez. Like they're some of the best cigars I've ever smoked. Like I mean, I mean that fucking very honestly. And this is before, so I smoked these cigars before I ever met Danny. Like way before I ever met him, I smoked these cigars and was like, my first reaction was like, what in the fuck am I smoking? Were, Where did it come from? Weren't they unbanded? Um, we had, I think we had a couple of that. No, I think they were all banded. Were they? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they were all banded. And I think the, the Primera Class, Class A was the first one I had. And the next one was a cigar that, you can't find at all and hasn't even been released yet, which I still have two of, which to me is the best cigar, but I can't name it and I can't say anything about it because it's not on the market. But also like the Series 84 Maduro is so good. I reviewed yeah. that cigar and it's fucking incredible. So overall, Rodriguez is underrated. This particular cigar is underrated. Get your goddamn hands on it. Um, let's... Um, we're at about the 50 minute mark and I'm going to bring up a cigar that is insanely controversial. Okay. Um, to me personally, oh. overrated, underrated. And that is the crown heads La Coliseon. Do we feel Chris that this cigar is overrated or underrated in the cigar marketplace. This is now, a little a little background on the cigar. The La Colision is a collaboration, a true collaboration between Crown Heads and, and, Willie. and Willie Herrera uh, of Drew Estate. So Drew Estate actually manufactures the cigar and it's distributed by Crown Heads. Now, let me rewind a little bit. This cigar was originally announced on our podcast before it was announced anywhere. We had John and Willie on the podcast to announce this particular cigar, and I believe it was our episode 100, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it probably was, yeah. Massive episode, right? Just big fucking release. Um, so that being said, Drew Estate produced, Crown Heads distributed, La Colosion came with a ton of fucking hype, a massive amount of hype. When it came out and it hit the shelves, they they're flying. They were flying off the shelves. I still think, to a degree, they're still they're still doing pretty fucking well. But Chris, what do you feel about the La Colosión overall? And this is a cigar that we've had on the podcast and we've rated. We've not necessarily rated in terms of overrated, underrated. We just gave it what we thought was an appropriate score at the time. Yeah. Um. Hmm. It's not my favorite. It's not my favorite Crown Heads. Um, I always want all of them to be, but that's just not how things pan out sometimes. <laughs> that said, it's a $13 cigar coming packaged out of Drew Estate, um, blended between the, the Crown Heads family and Drew Estate family. Um, I, I, I wanted to like it and I wanted to like it so much that I had it before it released i had it as it released 
and I had it multiple times after it was already on shelves, uh, months after. Each time I smoke it, I always have a little bit of hope that it will reach a point to where I would love it. Well, you know, it's kind of like listening to music, right? You might hear a song on the radio and you're like, eh, I don't know if I like it, but you hear it enough, it starts to build up in you and, you, and then you start to start singing along to it and you're like, oh shit, I think I like this song. This La Codelicione was a song that I've listened to so many times and each time I listen to it, the more I just realize I don't really like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, at a $13 price point, it's one by which, well, at least the ones we had was like around 13 uh, I think it was like uh, the, four oh. The average price of this cigar in, uh, what is the size of the cigar? What, 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 uh, the five, dude, the five by 46 is $11. So yeah, you're probably right for the large of hole is somewhere around 13. I don't yeah. have the exact numbers, but yeah, you're probably pretty close. I I I t I could totally appreciate people that like this cigar. Um, but my personal opinion is it's it's overrated. It's an overrated cigar. Um I've always wanted to love it. I just don't. Um and and when I when I when I smoke it and I'm like it's it's a decent smoke, it's not one by which it's worth the price point and the hype that was around it at this point uh that i would say overrated i um i agree with you in terms of i think it's an overrated cigar i think where the cigar shines is where drew estate shines a lot of times in their cigars and that is in the construction we gave this cigar high marks in terms of construction and burn um and i think that that is really what helped elevate the score for us in terms of really what we thought from a value perspective the cigar was worth um, I think where the cigar was hyped up, but where it fell short for me was in the flavors. Mm -hmm. I didn't think the cigar was overly dynamic. I've said about this before, and you can, re re you can read the review that we posted. We have a whole podcast on it. It's episode 112. Um, so you can actually you know, listen to it, read our review, the whole thing. It's online. Um, I, I think a blend with Connecticut Broadleaf could be so much better than what that cigar represented. I was just disappointed in the fact that, and I agree with you in terms of I've had the cigar multiple times. I've had, I dude, I've had this cigar fucking 30 times. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of in a similar situation as you or sort of like, I, I've always wanted it to get better. And I think there was enough hype around it where I don't know that people aren't being honest with themselves or they truly like this. I don't know. And I'm not speculating either way, one way or the other. I'm only saying that it's strange to me that I, I've continued to smoke this cigar and have smoked this cigar and will continue to smoke this cigar over periods of time, either through rest and aging and so on and so forth, to see if I can get what everybody else is touting, what everybody else is getting that makes this cigar so wonderful in the eyes of the, the average consumer or even the average review platform. It just wasn't there for me. Um, this particular Vitola was 1350, by the way. So even 50 cents more than what yeah. uh, than what you had initially stated. So you were close, obviously. But um, I just thought it was so underwhelming, um, especially for that price point. Because I look at it and I go, "Fuck! I can buy in terms of Drew Estate. I can buy a T52. I can buy a Liga Provada Number no. Nine. It's like massive cigars in the fucking industry for the same price point." And I, I just was, I was like, "This from uh, the flavor wasn't." dynamic enough it wasn't complex enough for me especially at that price i just thought it was i thought it was lacking and it has all the components to be good we're talking about connecticut broadleaf sumatra binder Domin uh, Very bitter. dominican and nicaraguan filler combinations it should have an elevated complexity i just think it fell short in terms of my personal expectations so for me i thought it was overrated i it was one of the most hyped cigar releases of the year um, it was probably one of the biggest releases of the year in terms of, hey, when it hit the market, how quickly did it fly off the shelves? I would probably argue, and I don't know what those numbers look like, but I'm pretty sure it did really well, yeah. which at the end of the day, that's what matters. Um, but for me, 
I'm very critical of the cigar. And I don't know if it's just because, you know, the cigar itself was so overwhelming, or maybe I put crown heads at, at, at such a high standard in terms of uh, things that they release. And, and more often than not, uh, the vast majority are amazing. Like yeah. anything that comes from EP Carrillo. Uh, that with, Mil Diaz that just came out. Mil Diaz from the Pichardo. I, it's just fucking incredibly. The War is incredible. Like all these incredible cigars. And this one being the one with the most elevated price point was probably one that fell the most short for me. I would smoke the Juarez over this cigar every single day of the week, and it's less than half the price. Buy two for one, baby. I'd smoke the Juarez all day over the La and if Coast. And if you felt left out and you wanted something like the La Coast Coalition, just take two Juarez's, super glue, cut, the, cut the cap off of one, super glue them together, <laughs> and you've got yourself a La Coalition with a different blend. <laughs> I mean, that's not accurate at all. <laughs> I kind of like where you're going with it. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I, that dude, for me personally, it's missed. It's such, it's such a fucking void smoking experience for me personally. That when I smoke it, I'm just not, I, I sometimes just get kind of bored with it and I'm just not paying attention. I, it is just being honest. Like I, I, it's just kind of dull and numb a little bit. Um, it's kind of just like holding something in my fingers and fucking smoking it. I know I can pick up any other Crown Head cigar, Las Moreas, the Juarez. I can pick up any one of the Las Calaveras's. I can pick up any one of the Pinolos. I can pick up a lot of Pierce. I can pick up any other Court Reserve, any other fucking Crown Head cigar and just be totally in the moment smoking that cigar and just pondering like, why do I love this so much? It's so good. It's so delicious. And here's all the changes and the subtleties and all that. And I don't get any of that with the La Colisión. None of that. None of those factors exist in that cigar for me. Just, just is what it is, I guess. But I think the cigar overall in the marketplace was very overrated, even though there's a ton of people who fucking love the cigar to no end. And it was really, from a critic perspective, super highly rated. So maybe we're the assholes. I don't know. Or maybe we're just, <laughs> maybe we're the only ones being honest. It's tough telling at this point. But um, either way, it seemed like a very successful cigar. Yeah. Yeah, can't fault it. It's if it's selling, it's a good cigar. If it's selling, it's smelling. I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna stick with it. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. I think it's appropriate to end on that one because that one to me is probably one of the more controversial ones for us personally. Um. We only made through like a small handful of these, so of course we can generate multiple episodes from the individual cigar, overrated, underrateds. And of course, we'll keep continuing doing the brand ones until we make our way through every single one of them. Yeah. And as a small token to all the brands we've reviewed today, even though one of your cigars might be overrated by us, just know that we still love you. I think each brand that we've talked about today in some small consolation should know that overall, we love you all. I also like to be um, somewhat self-deprecating in the fact that I'm going to say, who the fuck are we? Yeah. I often say, who gives a shit what we say? Are we the fucking authoritarians on cigars? No. Do we no. pretend to be Cigar Coop? Do we pretend to be Half Wheel? Do we pretend to be Cigar Aficionado? No. All those guys are old as fucking nerds. And we aren't either one of those, in my opinion. We're not old. I don't think we're nerdy. Um, so are we the th ultimate authority? Nope. But we love to smoke and we love to give our opinions. And a lot of people fucking listen. So I feel like we at least have to be authentic and we have to be honest, even despite popular opinion. That's what we're going to do. That's true, bro. That's so true. Wise words. Such wise words. Yeah, you look you look like you're going into like a fucking Wall Street meeting. Well, I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah, how's that New York stock exchange today? Oh, uh, well, a lot of downs. <laughs> it is actually down, and it's down because Donald Trump contracted coronavirus. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what they're saying at least. I'm just like, oh yeah, I guess consumer confidence changes when the fucking president gets coronavirus. Like, what the fuck is wrong with people? I don't know. Anywho, um, let's wrap this shit up. We're right at an hour, so let's finish at an hour. Um, 
Excuse me. That was a bourbon burp. A bourbon burp. burp. A bourbon burp. Um, you can visit our show sponsor, My Cigar Pack, at www.mycigarpack.com. Promo code HOT10 at checkout for $10 off your first pack. And also check out their new factory direct cigars. I'm only going to say this as a teaser. Maybe we'll have something to do with that. I can't blink. Eventually. I can't do it with one eye. Hold on. I can do it with both. I remember when I used to wink, I would just go like this. And I remember mom telling me, like, it's one eye. And then I was like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> now I can kind of do it. Um, but maybe we'll have something to do with that long term. I don't know. We'll see. Um, you can also visit our website, www.hotticketweekly.com, for news, reviews, and more. You can find the podcast on the website, too. Chris was supposed to actually put up two cigar reviews this week, and he has not posted any at all. I did. He actually was supposed to do one last week, and he said he was going to do two this week. It's Friday, and nothing has been posted. Hey, yes, um, one did post. Yes, oh, it did? did? Thanks for telling me. Sure did. Um, I reviewed the Yagua. Yagua. That's right, the Yagua by J.C. Newman. Yeah, that is a brand new cigar. It just hit shelves not too long ago. It's very primitive looking. If you've not smoked the Yagua yet, it looks like someone just threw a bunch of fucking tobacco in a goddamn fucking box and was just like, smoke this. It looks ridiculous. It reminds me of the CAOs in terms of the primitive look, like the COA Amazon Basins, <laughs> like that yeah. whole category of cigars. But even worse, it's almost like I feel like they had shitty cigar rollers and they're like, how do we, how do we take the, the fact that we know that these are going to be fucking inadequately produced because our cigar rollers are terrible, but let's, let's put a marketing spin on it to make it look primitive and we'll sell them like, oh, they're supposed to be that way. They're supposed to be shittily made. That well, is the J.C. Newman Yagua. Well, apparently the way they described it was in the 40s in Cuba, they used to bind bundles of cigars in palm tree leaves. And right. that's what gives it the characteristics of these like indentations are on it. And they're not perfectly circled because they're all bunched into like a bundle and they're squeezing yeah. on each other. Yeah. Mine was like the shape of a triangle. If you look down it, it was yeah. like the shape of a triangle. <laughs> yeah, no, I've heard the story, but do I believe it? I don't know. I don't know if I do. I'd like to visit the factory to find out, quite frankly. Part of me believes that none of it's true, and it's just marketing. <laughs> and really what they have is just a bunch of shitty fucking rollers that they just hired that don't know how to make a goddamn cigar. Imagine me going in there and making a cigar for the first time. That's what it would look like. It would look that terrible. Um, but either way, it doesn't matter how it looks. It matters how it smokes. That's true. Yeah, the flavor's like. So check out that review, www.hotticketweekly.com. You can check out the J.C. Newman Yagua. Um, we'll have some more reviews coming out this week. I have one. I have a great one. And by great, I don't mean great at all. But I'm going to post it. <laughs> post it in a few days. It'll be a great read. It'll be, it'll be a good read for sure. <laughs> um, I wouldn't even spoil it by saying the manufacturer because as soon as I say it, people are going to go, Ugh. <laughs> um, but it's a new cigar and that's what we're challenging ourselves to do. Um, so let's do this. We have some video games to play. I'm going to put some pork chops on the grill, head out back with my Nintendo switch and, uh, play some video games for a little bit. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks oh, everybody for listening. Huh? <laughs> oh, I'm part of that. <laughs> you are part of that. Yeah, you definitely are. So, um, thanks everybody for listening. This is episode 168. We'll be back at you next week with episode one. 69. Oh, you like that? Good All right. See everyone. See ya. Adios.